Hello everyone. Our second video for the semester is going to be uh, continuing on with our topic of momentum. And today we're going to talk about a very important law in physics called the conservation of momentum. Uh, this works very similar to things that you guys are already familiar with, like conservation of energy and conservation of mass. This idea that momentum is conserved for any isolated system that we can uh, choose. So we'll talk more about what a system is and what that means. But it tells us that the total momentum of a system is constant, provided that there are no external forces. So conservation of momentum is a super important law in physics. Uh, it applies on the macro scale as well as the micro scale. Um, and essentially it tells us that the momentum after an interaction in a system is equal to the total momentum before that interaction happens. So we're going to look at a couple of examples of this. Um, remember from our previous video that our momentum is equal to mass times velocity. So what this is saying is that we're going to have an initial momentum in a system uh, of two objects typically. And then some interaction will happen, either they'll collide or they'll split apart from one another but it's saying that the momentum after that interaction will be the same as it was initially. So let's just look at a couple of examples. The easiest way to do this is kind of just to jump right into it. Um, it's really just using your idea of momentum um, over and over again. So in this first example, we have two ice skaters, uh, Taylor and Tino. They are standing facing each other on frictionless ice. So this frictionless ice is kind of an important thing to keep in mind. If we look back on the previous slide, uh, I mentioned that the total momentum is constant provided that there are no external forces. What that means is that there's nothing on the outside of this system affecting how it's moving or what's, what it's doing. So things like friction or like an outside push or an outside pull. There's nothing like that. Um, there's just these two people and they are standing facing each other and they are going to have an interaction between them being this push, right? They are going to push off from one another. There's not a third person outside of the uh, scenario like pulling them apart or pushing them one way. They are pushing off of each other. So that's an important uh, thing to realize. So Taylor's mass is 45 kilograms and then Tino's is 75. Ooh, yes, 75 kilograms. And it says after they push off from one another, Taylor's going to move off at a speed of 2.2 meters per second. So she is going to fly back this way, 2.2 meters per second. And they're asking us what is Tino's speed? Well, typically when we did a problem like this, you guys might ask what kind of force is being applied and what about kinematics and all of that stuff. But we're just going to use our conservation of momentum concepts uh, to answer this one. So we are going to have a little column here for our initial momentums. So they are standing facing each other on frictionless ice. So before this interaction happens, before they push off from one another, what is Taylor's momentum? Well, Taylor's momentum, since she's just standing on the ice, is zero. Oh, they both start with T. Okay, so Tino's momentum is also zero because he too is just standing on the ice. They are motionless before the interaction happens. So they push off from one another. We have our interaction. And then Taylor has a new momentum, right? And her momentum is her mass times her velocity which in this case is 45 times 2.2. .2. And that'll get us her momentum after the interaction, which is 99 kg times ms. All right, so now let's look at Tino. Tino has a momentum now, right? He's going to go off in this opposite direction. His mass times his velocity, whatever it is, we don't know. His mass is 75 times some velocity. But conservation of momentum tells us that whatever the momentum for the system is before, it needs to equal the final. So we can say initial momentum equals final. The initial momentum in this case, if I added these two together, I'd still get zero. So the initial momentum is zero. And zero has to add up or has to equal these two guys' momentums. So Taylor's, which is 99, plus whatever Tino's is, 75 times 2.2. 2. 
times this velocity. We don't know what his velocity is just yet. So we can subtract 99 from both sides. We get negative 99 equals 75 phi, and then we just divide 99 by 75 to get a velocity for him of 1.32 meters per second. This is negative. The negative is important, right, because the negative tells us that they pushed off from one another. Taylor went this way, and Tino's going to go the other direction. So the negative is there to show us the direction. OK, here's another quick example. Um, so Dalton is running down his sidewalk and jumps, landing on his stationary skateboard. He then rolls along the street on his skateboard. He has a mass of 70, and the skateboard's mass is 4. If Dalton's speed is 4 meters per second when he jumps onto the board, what is the board's speed after he jumps on it? So here is he, Dalton. He's running, speed of 4 meters per second. And then here is skateboard. And the skateboard's velocity initially is 0. It's at rest. So his mass is 70. So we're going to have a before picture, and then we're going to have an after picture. After they are a system, right? Dalton and his skateboarder system, they are together. And they are going to move off at some velocity. So again, let's look at initial condition and then our final. Initially, the momentum of the skateboard is going to be zero, right? The skateboard is at rest, it's stationary. And then the momentum of, of Dalton is going to be 70 times 4 mass times velocity, which is 280. Final momentum, uh, we're not sure what it is, but our initial has to equal our final. So 0 plus 280, right, because I'm going to add these two momentums together, has to equal the final momentum of him and the skateboard together. So they have, um, they are moving together as one object, so their masses are going to come together to be 74, and they're both going to go at some velocity times v. So when we divide both sides by 74, we get a velocity of 3.8 meters per second. All right, the other uh, one last thing we're going to talk about is the idea of an explosion. So an explosion happens whenever you have particles in a system and they move apart after really brief and intense interaction. And in explosions, we have the same kind of conservation of momentum idea. Uh, this helps to explain the recoil on things like rifles or cannons, right? So when you have a cannon and it fires a cannonball, the cannonball takes off with a very high velocity, but the cannonball is pretty small compared to the size of the cannon. So the total momentum has to be conserved, right? So if the system momentum initially is zero, then after that explosion, it has to be zero again, much less, uh, much like this situation with Taylor and Tino. So the cannon will move back a little bit. It just doesn't move back very fast because it has so much more mass than the cannonball. So let's look at an explosion example. So 30 gram ball is fired from a 1.2 kilogram spring loaded toy rifle with a speed of 15 meters per second. What is the recoil speed of the rifle? So I'm going to try to draw a rifle, but it's not going to look very good. All right. So um, we have our rifle, our little toy rifle. And initially, the toy rifle and the bullet have no momentum, right? Initially, they are at rest. Once I fire that bullet, it now has a momentum, which is its mass times its velocity. The mass is 0.03, right? Because we have to convert that to kilograms. 0 0.03, and it leaves with a velocity of 15. So that gives it a momentum of 0.45. The rifle, we know, has a mass of 1.2, but we don't know what its velocity is. That's what we're trying to figure out. So initial momentum equals final. 
Our initial momentum in this case, since both things are at rest, is zero. After the interaction, right, in this case it's an explosion, after the interaction, our bullet leaves with 0.45 momentum. And then we have the momentum of the rifle, which we don't know what its velocity is. So subtract 0.45 from both sides. 0.45 divided by 1.2, and we get a velocity for our rifle of 0.38 meters per second. Again, this is negative, right? Because this negativity is telling us that this is a recoil velocity, or a velocity that is going in the opposite direction as our bullet. Okay, uh, this is a question for you guys to answer. This is just a conceptual idea to make sure you understand the idea of explosions and conservation of momentum. Uh, read through this. You shouldn't have to do much math, if any, at all. But um, come to class with your answer, and we'll talk about it then.